to American Bollywood News. I'm Kelly, and today's headlines are India State aims to plant a record 50 million trees in a day. Honda unveils first hybrid motor without heavy rare earth metals. NBC won't broadcast Rio Olympics opening ceremonies live. India's first crowdfunded electric bike launched and runs 11 kilometers and just one rupee. Hundreds of thousands of people gathered in India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh, to try and plant 50 million trees in 24 hours in the hopes of shattering the world record. The goal was to plant all the saplings as quickly as possible across the state to increase the area's forest cover and to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for the most trees planted in a day. The current record is at 847,275 set in Pakistan in 2013. More than 800,000 people, including students, lawmakers, government officials, housewives, and volunteers from nonprofit organizations, headed out on Monday to plant the saplings at designated spots along country roads and highways, rail tracks, and forest lands. Senior forest official Sanjeev Saran says the sites where the trees have been planted would be monitored through pho aerial photographs taken at regular intervals to check how many of the saplings were thriving. Uttar Pradesh's top officials say they hope that the planting of 50 million trees can help spread awareness and enthusiasm about afforestation and environmental conservation. Now, India's government is encouraging all 29 states to start tree planting drives to increase the country's forest cover as part of commitments made at last year's climate change summit in Paris. The government has designated more than $6.2 billion for tree planting across the country, in keeping with its pledge to push India's forest cover to 95 million hectares, or 253 million acres, by 2030. Honda pledged to reduce its use of rare earth metals a decade ago, and now the automaker took another step forward towards that goal this week. The new motor doesn't use heavy rare earth metals like dysprosium and terbium, instead relying on magnets from deodo steel that cost 10% less and weigh 8% lighter than the previous components. In fact, the automaker is the first to develop a hybrid motor that doesn't use heavy rare earth metals. Honda announced the new hybrid motors will make their debut in the compact Freed minivan this fall, a vehicle that's already on the road in Asia. During the same announcement, Honda noted that not only would cutting off the rare earth metals save money, but would also reduce the potential for price fluctuations on the materials it uses to build the engines. These new engines will reduce the reliance on the pricey rare earth metals that are primarily supplied by China, but Honda says that those rare earth metals are not completely nixed. This new engine still has neodymium, which is found in North America, Australia, and China. While that may be the case, this is still a huge step in a progressive direction for hybrid vehicles. NBC won't broadcast the Rio Olympics opening ceremonies live, and Olympics fans hoping that a Games in the Americas would persuade NBC to finally broadcast the opening ceremonies live have been left disappointed yet again. Even though Rio de Janeiro's time zone is just one hour ahead of the east coast of the United States, the much-watched spectacle will be televised and streamed online on a delay basis starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. The ceremonies will actually start at 7 p.m. Eastern, which is 8 p.m. in Rio. To make matters worse, broadcasts in western regions will have a staggered start time. Coverage in the mountain time zone starts at 7 p.m. local, 9 p.m. Eastern. Coverage in the Pacific time zone starts at 8 p.m. local, 7 p.m. Eastern and coverage in the Central Time Zone starts at 7 p.m. local, the same hour as the Eastern Time broadcast window. NBC hasn't aired an opening ceremonies live since the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, and hasn't aired a summer opening ceremonies live since 1996 in Atlanta. Fans of the athletic event have complained endlessly since then, and with the introduction of social media, those complaints have only gotten louder over the years. Executives from the network were peppered with questions about the decision at an Olympic preview press event NBC held Monday afternoon at the network's Rockefeller Center headquarters. They were well prepared for the onslaught. Mark Lazarus, the NBC Sports Group chairman, says the network wants to make sure audiences are reminded that the opening ceremonies are a celebration of Brazilian culture, a celebration of Rio. As broadcasters of the games, NBC wants to make sure that part of the games are not lost on viewers as a flash of color and excitement. For that reason, the games will be streamed on an hour delay. It's not just Elon Musk who is serious about electric vehicles. There are passionate Indian entrepreneurs who are trying with their own capacity to revolutionize this niche within India. S. Manikandan, co-founder and managing director of 40-year-old company called Miltex Engineers Private Limited, has created history by launching India's first crowd-funded e-bike, Sparrow 
which promises to deliver a stunning 9 pesa per kilometer experience, roughly 11 kilometers for less than a rupee. And the best part is that it solves a very grave problem of electric vehicles, recharging options. What is encouraging is the fact that Miltex has no experience in vehicle manufacturing, especially electric vehicles. The 40-year-old company based out of Coimbatore manufacture textile manufacturing spare parts. Miltex and Mandikan have been working on this project for the last three years, putting $6 million into this. Sparrow has been designed as a bicycle which can convert into an electric bike. It has a range of 100 kilometers while in electric mode and can deliver 0 to 25 kilometers per hour speed within 10 seconds. Once the battery is fully charged, this electric bike can run for 100 kilometers and one unit is usually spent to charge it fully. The biggest issue with electric vehicles is the concern of recharging. Elon Musk, director of Tesla Motors, is creating several charging points across the USA, but that isn't so easy to do in India. So the creators of this bike seem to have solved that issue. To recharge the bike, simply start pedaling. The 48-volt lithium-ion detachable battery, which powers this e-bike, can be charged while pedaling. And within three hours of such labor, 20 to 40 percent of the battery can be recharged. The company has listed their project on a crowdfunding platform called Fuel a Dream, where 73 percent of the target has already been achieved. Ranganath Thoda, founder and chief executive of Fuel a Dream, says they were so impressed by the design and affordability of this concept that they didn't just want to provide a platform for the creators. Fuel a Dream officials gave design advice and product architecture suggestions as well. Contributors are able to get massive discounts on the purchase as well. Under the National Electric Mobility Mission Plan for 2020, the government of India is planning to have 7 million electric vehicles on Indian roads by 2020. Self-driven projects such as Sparrow can be the ultimate lever to execute India's government's ambitions when it comes to electric vehicles. This has been American Bollywood News. I'm Kelly. Keep watching American Bollywood TV.